Hi all, I'm Giovanni Bekisa. Um, I'm one of the OpenSD developers. Um, uh, I use OpenSD for a lot of things. Uh, and this time uh, uh, I will talk about RelayD. Uh, RelayD is, uh, um, is, a, is a proxy software. Is, um, it can do a lot of things. Uh, it was imported uh, as, a, as a load balancer. Then uh, um, it becomes a, a real proxy. It can do. Uh, it can be used for uh, as a reverse proxy, uh, as an SSL accelerated reverse proxy. So to handle SSL connections. Uh, as a transport point proxy uh, with uh, uh, filtering capabilities, so uh, it can filter HTTP traffic, uh, for example, uh, before relaying it to uh, the web server. Uh, it can do application re redirect, or so uh, it can uh, relay uh, whatever connection, even if it doesn't know anything about the protocol. So we can do, for example, uh, terminal server uh, uh, connections to uh, many uh, Windows machines, even if uh, nobody knows uh, uh, quite all about the RDP protocol. Uh, it can do, it can be a load balancer, which is uh, uh, the main uh, use of RayLADD. Then uh, it can be also a one link balancer, so you can use uh, uh, in a firewall to uh, balance between internet connections. Uh, we, so uh, if you have, uh, for example, uh, two internet connections with two different routers, uh, it can balance the, your connection on uh, uh, one, uh, yeah, or one uh, or, uh, or both router you're using. It was uh, first important in OpenBSD 4.1. Um, at the moment, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, OpenBSD 5.1 was released. Uh, we do a release every six months, so uh, it's five years old. Uh, initially, it was imported uh, as, uh, with the name of auth stated because uh, the main purpose was to check uh, uh, availability of uh, remote hosts. Then uh, um, it was renamed in OpenBSD 4.3 to RelayD uh, because uh, it became to do um, a lot more a lot of things. So uh, uh, we thought that hosted was not the right name for this software. Uh, it was written mostly by Pierre Evrichard and Reich Slöder. Uh, some other hackers uh, uh, put uh, some fix uh, or some uh, other features on it, but uh, uh, most work was done by them. Uh, it was written with security in mind, uh, as all good software uh, should be, uh, and is based on iMessage framework. Uh, iMessage framework uh, is a framework uh, in libutil uh, we use for uh, interprocess communication. So uh, we have a set of function called uh, iMessage compose uh, or iMessage send, uh, iMessage write, uh, message init, uh, etc., to uh, do correct interprocess communication uh, without uh, reinvent the wheel every time we need to, to write uh, uh, communication between parent and child processes. It's uh, IPv4 and IPv6 uh, capable, so um, it's, it runs fine on both uh, connectivities. Uh, it's CARP capable. Uh, CARP, it's uh, a protocol uh, which is used to do uh, um, firewall clusters. So uh, you can have a virtual IP with many nodes behind him. And
and uh, it's integrated with SNMPD, which is another daemon. Uh, so uh, RelayD can send trap uh, to uh, an SNMPD um, software to when uh, a host check state uh, changes, so you have uh, beautiful graphs, uh, uh, statistics, uh, and so on that some people like. Okay, so uh, RelayD is divided in uh, a main parent process and uh, three different engines. We have so uh, the parent process, which, which is uh, uh, the only process which is run as root. Then uh, we have uh, um, other child processes which are uh, pre-forked and uh, could be uh, forked later, later if we need uh, uh, more resources. And we have the host check engine, which uh, um, checks uh, the state of the uh, of the uh, hosts of the nodes uh, we want to check. The PFE engine, which uh, uh, it's used to interact uh, with the packet filter, so to add uh, on the fly uh, rules in PF to the direct uh, uh, connection to machine, and the relay engine, which is the proxy which uh, uh, checks uh, um, uh, layer 3 and layer 7 uh, traffic uh, and uh, um, acts uh, as a proxy so relay connections to uh, the real servers. Well, uh, the parent uh, process is the only one that runs uh, as root. Um, it runs as root because uh, it needs to read configuration files, uh, which uh, are owned by root. Uh, it needs to set up uh, a control socket, uh, uh, which is used uh, then by the client part of the software to interact uh, with the RelayD. Um, it needs uh, in the relay part uh, to listen to, for example, uh, in a high uh, level port, uh, so a port uh, uh, with numbers um, minus than uh, 1024 that needs root uh, to be opened, uh, to be to bind. Uh, it needs to uh, sometimes to call in certain configurations external scripts to check uh, um, for um, um, host availability. So. Uh, Privileges in this case uh, uh, will be dropped uh, to the relay D user before uh, uh, the execLP function call. So um, the the script will be executed with the relay privileges in the ch root um, of the user. Uh, then uh, it can do carp the motion requests and uh, root privileges are uh, needed for that. The host check uh, engine uh, uses many methods to verify that uh, the target uh, is live. Uh, the easiest one uh, is ICMP check. So uh, it checks uh, by sending an ICMP packet uh, if the host uh, is uh, dead or is live. But uh, in many cases, uh, this is not uh, um, a good idea because uh, a service could be down or uh, we could have uh, other problems, for example. Uh, we can do a TCP connection. So uh, the relay. Uh, check uh, uh, the freeway and shake uh, this be connection uh, to the host and this is uh, uh, used mainly uh, when uh, uh, we are not doing http uh, or we cannot uh, use external script to check uh, uh, the other host for example where uh, where we are proxying uh, uh, some um, services we do not know nothing about the protocol so um, it could be um, a service running on Microsoft Windows, for example. 
Then we we have uh, SSL which, uh, which uh, do uh, SSL and shake uh, the HTTP HTTPS part and uh, external scripts. With external scripts, uh, we can do whatever we want because uh, it runs a script uh, which could be well, it's uh, it's a, a program which uh, it could be written in Perl, C, Python, Ruby, or whatever else, and uh, uh, it accepts uh, the host you want to check. And uh, it should return uh, true or false. Uh, in the program, you can do whatever check you want. The packet filter uh, creates and destroys PF rules, uh, updates PF uh, tables based on AC uh, notification. Um, in the in this kind of setup, uh, the, we have uh, a table in PF uh, with uh, uh, all the hosts we want to check. Um, the PF engine uh, checks for uh, um, host availability and then disable or enable uh, the hosts that are alive. So uh, uh, PF uh, uh, redirects packets uh, basing uh, on uh, the content uh, of this table. The relay engine um, filters packets and relay packets. So it uh, creates a listening socket for services. If you want, for example, to um, relay HTTP, it, um, it's binded to the standard AT port um, and filters prof protocols, uh, mainly HTTP, before uh, start to relay uh, software. Uh, this uh, example, the HTTP proxy, we got uh, internet, uh, we got, uh, we got a relay D, which uh, is our proxy, and uh, a web server, which uh, could be um, running on any operating system. Okay, we have, uh, uh, first of all, we have, we have a table, uh, which uh, could be of one host of, or of many hosts, if you want to balance connection. We have some uh, standard configuration, which is the interval uh, between checks. Uh, by default, it's 10 seconds, but we, we'd like to improve uh, or, or not uh, this one. We got a timeout in milliseconds uh, of the response. We, we got uh, pre-fork, so uh, how many processes we want to fork uh, uh, at the start of the program. And log updates, if you want to log, uh, all, uh, to syslog only uh, updates uh, of state uh, changes, uh, or uh, um, we could have a log all if you want to log uh, all states. So uh, we will have uh, on syslog uh, um, a line every 10 seconds, even if uh, all these up and changes. Then uh, we want to listen to our IP address, which could be IPv4 or IPv6, uh, with a port. And then we forward our request to uh, our web host. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we'll check uh, that uh, the HTTP call to the main root of the web server uh, will be okay. So we'll have a response code of uh, uh, 2000. Um, a bit more complicated, uh, uh, this setup uh, we have uh, the possibility to check uh, uh, more info or on our web server. Uh, because for example, uh, with um, a website uh, uh, will run if uh, Apache, uh, for example, is running, uh, 
but uh, with a simple HTTP check, we do not know if uh, memcache uh, is running uh, or uh, if uh, the MySQL backend uh, server is running uh, or whatever else. So if we want to check uh, uh, more complex uh, things, uh, we have to use uh, a script, like this one. Um, it accepts uh, a remote address, then it tries to connect to the HTTP port, uh, then it tries to connect to the main cache port, and if it all goes well, it return a real a true value, otherwise it return a false value. Um, well, this has been streamed down without uh, any check uh, about anything uh, to to put it on the slide. Uh, anyway, we can in this way we can do uh, whatever we want. Um, in more complicated example, we can uh, uh, from this page uh, we can, uh, um, for example, uh, uh, do an HTTP connection to a backend web server. Uh, running Windows, uh, if you want to check, uh, for example, that the SQL server is running correctly, or uh, other things uh, that are not so easy to check uh, from uh, a BSD host. Um, in uh, reverse proxy configuration, uh, we can filter HTTP requests. Uh, we can uh, we can change we can filter so um, both uh, headers and uh, body so we can change or append HTTP request. We can filter uh, by checking HTTP headers or by checking URL or by checking path. We can filter also by checking the response of the web server. Okay, so um, we have uh, a return error, which is uh, um, which means that uh, uh, we want to return an error page if uh, um, our filter matches. Uh, we will, in this case, we will uh, append an X forward for either because uh, on our backend uh, uh, server we want uh, on log files uh, an uh, additional either um, for statistics uh, purposes because otherwise uh, all uh, with this con uh, with this uh, configuration uh, all connection to the backend wind web server will be from the relay proxy so we will have in our log files uh, all connections coming from this IP uh, with the X forward for we have uh, an additional either with the real IP which is doing connection we want to filter this path uh, the main problem here, uh, here is that uh, um, our customer is using a bad written Windows application which uh, nobody maintains no more. Uh, it doesn't want to change, but uh, it has uh, uh, security problems. So we want to filter some well-known uh, security script, secu uh, some yeah, security problems uh, to uh, prevent uh, uh, attacks uh, Mm, well-known attacks. Uh, then we want to uh, to change another either, uh, which is uh, uh, the connection. We will close the connection because once we have a real a proxy, the connection to the real world server, we want to close our connection. Otherwise, uh, the connection will close with standard timeout TCP values. So we will have uh, a lot of connection in our proxy that uh, will time out uh, uh, very, very lately. Okay, uh, we will try to uh, do a well-known kind of attack to our uh, Windows web server and we are blocked by um, relay D. 
um, this is the standard page, uh, but uh, in configuration we could have uh, we could add a style sheet uh, in CSS so we can design uh, whatever we want. Uh, it support, uh, really supports uh, all HTTP methods, so uh, head, uh, head uh, get, put, put uh, post, uh, options, uh, whatever you want. Another useful thing is uh, accelerated reverse HTTP proxy. Uh, we want to uh, doing the crypto part of the connection uh, on our proxy. Because for example, we, we do not want to handle uh, certificates to all our uh, web server, or because uh, it's, it could be complicated uh, to handle crypto on uh, our backend server. This way, uh, we decide to accept SSL v3 TLS v1, uh, high, only high uh, ciphers, uh, but not Diffie-Hellman protocol. Uh, and uh, we do not want SSL v2. So uh, if uh, uh, the requirements are respected, uh, the SSL connection goes well and we relay to our uh, internal web server. Uh, this way we have a secure connection from internet uh, to our proxy and then a plain connection from our proxy to our web internal web server. Uh, really the uh, um, work uh, um, so uh, uh, is doing the crypt and decrypt of all connection between uh, all uh, the the client and the server. We use uh, OpenSSL to create uh, our certificate. Uh, we could uh, create a private certificate uh, by, our, uh, by ourselves or uh, we could uh, uh, take uh, our sister file, uh, give to uh, VeriSigned or to other CR and, uh, um, and grab the file uh, signed by the certification authority. We'll put uh, uh, in the right place uh, uh, the certificate and it should work. We could use it uh, uh, as a, a transparent HTTP proxy. For example, uh, to um, if you want uh, to filter our uh, LAN, um, it's the filtering mechanism is is very simple. Um, mostly because. Uh, The URL filtering is uh, is using internally the fmh function. So uh, the regular expression you can use are a bit limited, uh, and it's not uh, a real uh, regexp engine. This because uh, if you if you have a lot of rules, uh, it could be uh, a little slow. This way is a, is a transparent proxy. Um, for example, we could replace uh, Squid if you do not want uh, all uh, the futures uh, Squid has. It doesn't work as a real proxy, it works only as a transparent proxy. So we, uh, with PF, we uh, redirect that connections uh, to our relay D engine, uh, and for example, we want to uh, block requests to some 
uh, website which is as mostly unuseful for work. Um, we listen to uh, in local host to port uh, uh, 8080. Uh, and we have you add the protocol HTTP filter, so we uh, we use the, the, the previous definition of the protocol to uh, uh, to filter our request. Uh, the error message is similar to the previous one, so the red uh, quite audible page. Um, in past version, uh, we could have the, um, a label, um, so we could uh, uh, unblock the request. Uh, we could add uh, um, an additional line on the web page to explain why the site was blocked. Uh, at the time. Um, it's uh, it's been uh, partially disabled because of the bug uh, in it, so we're trying to fix it. Another useful thing is application redirector. So we have more hosts, a win relay um, connection. To our uh, backend server, uh, we use the, mm, the redirect this time. Uh, so is uh, PF is involved. We listen on a public IP port. Uh, we add a tag, uh, which is used by PF to handle uh, connections in and out. Uh, we had sticky address uh, because we need uh, that uh, connection made to a host uh, returning packets uh, uh, should uh, go to the same host originated it. And uh, we have mode round robin. We can have mode round robin or mode load balance if you want to balance connections. Uh, this time we have checked TCP, but uh, in some cases, uh, for example, with MySQL, we could uh, uh, we could write a simple script uh, to check that MySQL connection uh, goes right. Uh, load balancer. Um, this is a, a balancing connection between uh, two DNS server. So uh, the main difference uh, is uh, that uh, uh, we balance connection and we do not uh, uh, do round robin. So we do not uh, uh, try to uh, connect uh, to connect to the both hosts one uh, one time to a host one time to another. Um, we have uh, in this configuration we have a protocol, so we set uh, uh, some TCP con uh, um, configuration to uh, improve perf TCP performance. Um, we improve the buffer and uh, we had no delay option. This is done, for example, in DNS. Uh, this should be done in S if you want to use SSH. If, uh, if you do not want that. Um, a mm, uh, long delay when you type uh, uh, something on the host, uh, uh, on, for example, on slow connections. Uh, then we got the client part, uh, which is uh, relay control, uh, which is the software to control uh, uh, the daemon, relay D. Uh, it can change at runtime a lot of configurations. Um, it can show many conf many uh, information about uh, uh, our relay setup, uh, about uh, how it's running, uh, which hosts uh, are up uh, or which hosts are down. Uh, it can reload configuration uh, and so on. It uses uh, the control socket uh, in Varda directory to communicate via IPC uh, with the daemon. Uh, 
in this example, uh, we have uh, a, a connection between uh, a IP address to the airport uh, ACD of uh, uh, our relay. Uh, we have the when the connection uh, was established, uh, how many times is idle, uh, and which is the relay we are using, and the process ID. Then we have uh, uh, the table of uh, our host. Uh, so uh, in this example, we have three hosts, and all hosts are up. With the redirect setup, the output is a bit different, but uh, uh, we have uh, um, which hosts are up or down. Uh, with the redirect setup, uh, Lady interacts uh, uh, with PF. So it creates a, a runtime uh, uh, PF uh, rules uh, on uh, a, an anchor under the relay D group. So in this example, for example, uh, we have on the uh, relay D anchor a MySQL uh, group with uh, some rules. We have uh, mm, a ruler which uh, passes packets on the root domain zero uh, from any to our uh, MySQL server uh, with uh, um, some options added by Relay-D. Uh, in a real configuration, we will have uh, probably many, many rules with that. Then uh, we can have uh, monitoring. Uh, we could monitor with uh, relay control by console, or we could monitor uh, with uh, SNP, SNMPD trap. Uh, so we can um, send uh, uh, a trap when a state of changes to our SNMPD uh, daemon. Then with the SNMPD, we can do graph with uh, uh, RRD tool or um, other software. Or uh, uh, we could use uh, uh, some plugin in iOS uh, or in Moonin. Uh, some, uh, um, some of them are in standard installation. Uh, some of them are um, script uh, uh, written by someone else, which uh, are easily found in the internet. So you could have uh, a, uh, a graph of uh, uh, the reliability of your proxy engine, which some people like most.